Hey, what's up guys? So I was just testing out a circuit here for a new design I'm working on and I figured eh, while I've got it hooked up here, I might as well show you guys how it works and introduce you to uh, a really cool circuit simulator online. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but basically what we've got here is a very simple latch circuit. Uh, so if we've pushed this button here, it turns the LED on, we can keep pressing it, the LED stays on. Uh, you press the second button and it turns it off. So it's like a reset button. Uh, there's a million variations of this circuit out there, but uh, this one uses two transistors and a few resistors, and that's it. Uh, a great application for something like this would be uh, for if you're pulling digital inputs slowly, and you've got a high-speed digital input that you might miss. So like, bam, like that, and then you go and check it, and let's say on your micro, you miss that. Well, with a latch, you can latch in that digital input, go check it, see it's high, and then unlatch it or reset it. So if you've got uh, like eight digital inputs on a shift register and they're high speed digital inputs, you can read all of those in, shift them all out with uh, the uh, HC165 shift register and then read them all out and then gang all of the reset lines together, which I'll show you how to do and then reset them all at once. Uh, it's also great for like low power applications. So if you're periodically uh, connecting to a wireless module and you know that's what's actually waking it up from a deep sleep, uh, you could have digital inputs hooked up to that that you don't want to you know trigger an interrupt with or anything like that, but you just want to wake up, check and see if those inputs ever went high, reset them, then go back to sleep. So things like that. Uh, but that's pretty much all there is to the circuit. So let's jump over to the simulator and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the simulator. And this is from Paul Falstad. And uh, I've been using this for several years now and I'm sure a lot of you uh, also know about this tool. Uh, those of you who don't know about this tool, well, I'm about to change your life. <laughs> so let's uh, go and find the tool. It's all web-based by the way. So if you go to falstad.com, you can also just uh, type in Falstad and uh, Falstad circuit simulator and that would also launch it. So we're gonna go here. I want the full screen version and uh, it launches this uh, this demo circuit here. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of different example circuits here and you can play around uh, in here all day trying out different things. And uh, it's not just the circuits, you can also make changes and uh, pull components out, change values. Uh, you've got a whole library of of simple basic components. Again, this isn't going to compete with LT Spice or uh, P Spice Implorer, uh, you name it, all the more advanced simulators. But for quick type circuits, you know, this is a great tool to test things out with. So, uh, by the way, the circuit, you can save your circuit in the link. So, like, say you design some circuit in here you can export as link, okay? So I've already done that for the circuit I just showed you, so if I just go ahead and paste in the link to it, there it is. So this is the circuit, and I'll have this link down in the description below. And you can see it's pretty simple. We've just got two MOSFETs here and a couple, trans, or a couple resistors, and that's it. So here is our trigger button, here is our reset button, and you can see as soon as I press that, our output's down here, it goes to five volts. I press the reset button and it goes back down to zero volts, okay? We're using a VP2106 for the uh, P-channel MOSFET, and that's in a TO92 package. Uh, 2N7000 for the N-channel MOSFET, and again, that's in a TO92 package. So, and I've used these parts before uh, in other videos, so they're, they're widely available. Okay, so the way this works is we first turn the P-channel MOSFET on with this switch. That's, its, uh, that's how you trigger it from, uh, uh, from the start. And its gate is pulled up high with this 100K ohm resistor. So it is off right now. And to turn it on, you pull the gate low. So if we do that, it pulls the gate low, turning it on. And as soon as that happens, we get a voltage here on the drain. And this is our output. But that voltage immediately turns on the end channel MOSFET, okay? And when that turns on, it pulls the gate of the P channel MOSFET low. And that uh, then takes over the 
uh, trigger switch here. So it's like a seal in. So it's kind of like you push this and then this immediately takes over by the time you let go of that and you have a latched output. And then to reset, obviously, you just have to pull the gate of the end channel MOSFET low. And we've got this little 10K in here to current limit because this here is five volts. So as soon as you ground that, you wanna kinda of current limit that. If I didn't have that, that would be a dead short from five volts. And you could use this circuit uh, for other things. You can just use this circuit just the way it is to make you know your own security system or whatever else. Uh, you could beef up this P channel FET if you wanted to, to really pull some serious power through this output as well. So that's another thing you can do with this. Um, what I like about it though is that it is extremely low power. Like right now it's sitting here pulling nothing. And I actually have this circuit here on the bench and I'm looking at the meter and it's pulling zero amps. Obviously when it turns on, we've got the current through this 100K ohm resistor, but you could even beef that up to, you know, or not beef it up, but loosen it out to like one meg or something like that, a, a much higher resistance. But I imagine that this output would be hooked right up to a microcontroller and possibly not needing this pull down resistor here. Maybe just the input impedance of the micro is enough. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much the circuit. Now we can kind of play around. So uh, this switch here uh, isn't really what you might see. You'd see like a digital output of some sensor and that digital output would need to be an open drain type sensor. So. Uh, what we can do is actually, let's build that up. So I want to show you how this all works. Uh, so if we add in a transistor, well, we could use a MOSFET, but we can use a transistor here. So I'm going to put bring in an NPN transistor like this. We'll connect up some wires. Okay, right click pull, brings up this menu, by the way. And we bring in a little resistor there. And you can kind of see, I'm editing this in real time and you can see the voltages and the current flow. It's it's really cool. Uh, and then as an input, let's, uh, let's bring in, I'm kind of doing this on the fly too. So if we bring in, I'm gonna go down to logic gates here and we'll bring, it, bring in a logic input. And this is, I'm just gonna, oops, I don't want that. Let's take a look at this logic here. The high voltage is five, low voltage is zero, so that's good. And let's change that to like 1K, okay? So now what would happen, and this, I just inverted this. So now we've got a, a high out here, turns this on, and you can see I need a little bit more juice, so let's make that uh, 10K there. There we go. So that probably would have been okay, but there we go. So reset the circuit so now a high input out here pulls in this transistor here grounding the gate of the p channel then allowing the n channel here to take over for the npn so you can see that oops when you double click and then it goes back high we still have the latched output out here no matter what we do to this this input Okay, so that's one cool thing. Now, what about this reset signal? Let's do the same kind of thing here. So, oops, let me kind of drag this whole thing out here. Now it's getting kind of ugly, but uh, let's just bring in maybe another NPN here. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, I can even copy and paste, but uh, I'll just draw it out from scratch. And let's make this a 1K. Draw out some wires here. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the logic uh, inputs here. Okay, so let's reset the circuit and you can see right when I do that, when I make this high, that gate pulls, pulls low through this transistor here and it resets the circuit. So I can go ahead and let's trigger this again. High, low, our output is latched high and then we can reset it with a high low out here okay so you know one thing you could do too if you wanted to eliminate these things or I, I mean you probably don't want to add another transistor in the mix with, with your microcontroller design so you'd want to at this point right here from your digital output from your micro drive this pin low and then set it to a high impedance state okay right after that 
But if you wanted to get around that and you just wanted your digital output pin to be high or low, you could just do this quick little design here. Okay? Uh, and obviously there's a million other things you could do here, but um, let me show you a couple other things. So if we wanted to, we can also view and scope. And we can look at, let's look at this gate. So I'm just right clicking on any of these wires here. And now we can actually see in real time and we can change the speed of this simulation. We can come down here and change scales. We can speed that up. We can look at uh, show, what are we looking at? We're, we're showing voltage, um, peak values. We can show that. Let's go back over here to that one. And now we can see these things. So we're looking at this one and you see that that fell low at the same time this went high. We can also stack these two, which is kind of cool. So now we've got them on top of each other so we can compare these things in real time. So like, you know, I can add in delays. So if I put in capacitors and made my own little RC circuit, I can see all of that in real time. And you know, these are mostly all just ideal components here, but it gets you you know, it gets you closer to what you're trying to do. Sometimes I'll actually use this simulator. It's almost like a virtual whiteboard, you know, that's interactive. So if I'm designing out a logic design like this that has a lot of moving pieces to it, it lets you kind of think through it, you know, without setting up a transient analysis, you know, with, with a tool like LT Spice. But obviously when you do, you know, uh, get something that's kind of you know what you want it to do then you can take it off and into a more powerful simulator but uh, that's basically it so I'll put uh, the the link to this circuit in the description below and uh, definitely play around with this and just it's even worth it just to come in here and play with all the different example circuits so uh, you can always blank out the circuit like that and uh, you come in here and you can play with 555 timers and all kinds of cool things. Let me see. And it is web-based, so these things are always changing. So, you know, at the time of making this video, who knows what this might look like when you're watching the video. So, uh, anyway, that is uh, the super simple latch circuit there with a simulator example. Thanks for watching.